Hello and welcome to this video and to my favourite and least favourite books of 2022. Now apologies for the background, the dog food, the dog bag, all of that, pig talking in the background. I'm grabbing a better time during my work day just to film this video for you. So this is my current work setup in the flat. Although if you've been watching you know we've bought a house so soon all the backgrounds will change again. But as I was saying we're talking books today, my favourite and my least favourite books of 2022 and yeah it's been quite a good reading year. I've ended up reading 75 books which is well over the 52 that I set myself which is no mean feat um, but I've really really enjoyed reading this year and I've made a big effort to get the time in my life to be able to do that and I am grateful for it. I'm just going to uh, tilt it down just a smidge. I'm very grateful for it but it doesn't mean that we didn't have some absolute winning books that I love and could rave about for a long time and also ones that I could also go on about for a long time that I didn't like quite so much. So I thought I would pick my sort of bottom five, top five, um, and I'll try not to make this video too long. So if we start from the worst and then we'll end with the best. Uh, so by far the worst book I read in 2022 was The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This book is loved by people. There are many people that think this is wonderful. Uh, it just was not for me. I It made me feel incredibly thick. I didn't really get a lot of it. I didn't really get why people rave about it quite so much. I understand that the writing's quite nice and it's quite pretty and all of that kind of thing, but the story itself, just no, it's supposed to be a mystery. I, I didn't like it very much. Quite frankly, it's made me realise that if I go into a book thinking I'm a bit dubious about this, I'm not sure if I'm going to like it, I think it might make me feel thick. It probably will and I need to just stop trying to do that. So that is my least favourite book. Potentially controversial that. If you can see me moving, I've got my story graph just off camera. So I'm going to cheat a bit and the next ones I'm going to talk about are uh, Bossy Pants by Tina Fey and Not That Kind of Girl by Lena Dunham. These are two memoirs, they follow a kind of similar strat strategy, that's not, similar format um, and pace and that kind of thing. And both I didn't really enjoy. Both are supposed to be comedic women, but I didn't like them very much. I, again, have realised that if I'm going into a memoir of someone that I don't really know, I'm less likely to enjoy it because I've got nothing to hook onto. I've got nothing to draw me in. And quite frankly, both the writing of Tina Fey and Lena Dunham irritated me somewhat, particularly Lena Dunham. Not ideal um, going into it. Whereas when I read Anna Kendrick's or Amy Poehler's uh, memoirs previous years, I've enjoyed those because I know about them a bit more. Whereas those two women, I've known one thing or nothing and it didn't really work for me. So next we move on to, you can never get this title right, if you saw the vlog you'll know which one I'm talking about, uh, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Zafran Four. Now maybe I don't like books with uh, three, three names in the title, in the author's name, because there seems to be a thing there. But this one, um, a kid after 9-11 trying to get over or coping with the fact that his dad was killed in that event but it just went really weird and I didn't really understand where we went with it. I did listen to it in audiobooks and maybe that has a, a thing because I'm not very good at audiobooks. I don't get on that well with them or at least haven't found one that I got on really well with yet but like Shadow of the Wind I just got a bit confused by it all and then it irritated me because of that. One that I didn't like too much was The Sisterhood of the Travelling Pants by Anne Brashares. So all the books that I've talked about have either rated at a 2 or a 2.5 for me. This was a 2.5. Um, I think if I read it as a teenager back when it was written, because I was about the age when it was first released, I probably would have loved it. But reading it now as a 31-year-old woman with you know, however many years since it's been published, you can really see the cliches and 
just some of the stuff that I didn't really want. I didn't want whiny teenage girls. I wanted fun, magical pants or jeans, shall we say. I'm English, jeans. And I didn't get that really. So it was just a bit of a letdown for me. There was no, there was no magic, no magic jeans. They were just jeans that fit everyone and they felt good in them. Um, it wasn't quite what I was hoping for. And as I said, all of the characters in that were massive, massive cliches. And the last book is probably the one that I liked the best of the Bad Bunch is The Sister Swap by Fiona Collins. I read this way back at the beginning of the year so quite frankly I don't remember it very well because it didn't leave much of a lasting impression but it was one of your generic sisters don't like each other, they live very different lives, they then swap lives and see how great each sister is and that's probably the reason why it didn't score very highly with me is because it was just very predictable. It's a story I've read several times and it wasn't it wasn't written in a way that made it any impact. It just followed the same sort of paint by numbers of that kind of book. So there were elements of enjoyment to it. You know, I didn't hate my reading experience. It was just very, very predictable. So those were the books that I least enjoyed in 2022. So now let's go to the books that I enjoyed the most. And this time we'll go from worst to best but not worst because they're all my favourite books if that makes sense. We'll end with the five stars which if you, in fact you probably don't know this, I very 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 rarely give out two stars. In fact over the last two years that I've been tracking it I have given four. So I average two a year um, and this year was no different. I gave two five stars. I think for me to get a five star I have to really really enjoy it and there has to be something surprising to it. It has to go down an avenue I didn't expect or really resonate with me that I wasn't expecting it to or just something has to hook me that I didn't expect and to be fair that's very hard to come by so I don't give five stars out easily but I have read some really good books this year pretty much the first books I read in the year were the Heartstopper series I mean I think everybody in his dog knows what the Heartstopper series is particularly now that there's been the Netflix series as well and I'm glad I managed to read those before that came out but this is a graphic novel that's following the love story of Nick and Charlie as they meet and come to terms with their own sexualities and all of that kind of thing and it's just very sweet and I enjoyed them all very much um, and it was just such a heartwarming way to start my year and my reading year and yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed and would recommend to anyone. If you're ever thinking I would quite like to read that, pick it up. It is worth the hype. Also worth the hype is the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. Now, I didn't think quite so much of the third book. I thought it went a bit nutty, shall we say. Um, some people find it really tense, but I just found it a bit of a farce, personally. But the first two books are incredible. I mean the third book is really good and it is a page turner and I gave it four stars rather than four up with 4.5. So the series as a whole is a great series and again if you're ever thinking about picking this one up I would highly recommend. It follows Pip who is essentially investigating murders that happen in her small town but the books are told through mixed media and different kind of things so each book has a different sort of mixed media in it and yeah thoroughly good time read them really quickly I was hooked throughout and I couldn't wait to get to the next book even if the third book was a little bit disappointing to me so then a series that I'd like to continue but I read the first one this year was A Curse So Dark and Lonely this is actually a fantasy which is unusual for me to enjoy but I did and it's essentially a Beauty and the Beast retelling but with some differences and I really enjoyed reading it I read it as part of my uh, 24 hour reading blog which I'll link up here if you haven't seen it. It's also where I read one of my least favourite books as well. I think it helped that I, I know the story of Beauty and the Beast and it's one of my favourite favourite Disneys and all of that kind of stuff so I was already going into it liking it if that makes sense but I think Bridget Kemmerer did a really good job of making fantasy just accessible because I, that's what puts me off. I, I don't always get all the lore and things like that of fantasy books but this one was super easy to follow and I cannot wait to continue with the rest of the series and see what happens to Ren and I've forgotten the girl's name but what happens to them. I know I said I was going to talk about five of my top favourites but 
we're gonna already break my own rules because I do also want to mention Wonder by RJ Palacio which is a book that I read very very recently it was one of the last ones I read in 2022 um, and this follows Augie who starts school for the first time age 10 um, but has a lot to contend with because he was born with a facial disfigurement and it's just a very sweet book I like how it's told by various different children and each of them you can tell how old they are and things like that so when it's Augie you know he's a 10 year old boy and when it's his sister Via you know that she's much older just because of the way that they're talking and the way that they're using language basically and it was just I sped through this book it was I mean the chapters are super super short but it was just a really life-affirming, is that too strong a word? But life-affirming time reading this. I actually watched the film quite soon after uh, reading the book. I mean, you can see the differences, but it's still good. Um, so if you don't want to read the book, I do recommend the film. It's on Netflix at the moment, if you're interested. So there we are. We're on to my only two five-star reads of the year and obviously my favorite. And I don't think I could pick which one topped which one. So I'm just going to talk about them as they appear in my Storygraph app. Uh, so the first one I read was A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. This follows, and I'm never going to remember their names, but two teenagers. Um, it's a first love, but one of them is deaf and one of them is, has sort of mutism. So she communicates through sign language and that's what brings them together. <laughs> Apologies, my battery decided to die so I don't know where I was because I've had to wait a good 20 minutes for that to go um, but quite a kind of thunder let's recap it follows a boy and a girl teenage boy and a girl I can't remember their names um, one is deaf one has mutism so she communicates with sign language which is how they connect and it's all of a story of first love and that kind of thing now the reason I enjoyed it so much was there was so much of it that I could relate to which I wasn't expecting and I also read it around the time of our wedding and a lot of it was about the girl not knowing that her life would be better and things like that and I was in such a happy place at that point that I was like it does, it does get better and it just, I just had the most brilliant time reading that book so it was a clear five star for me just for that sheer enjoyment the book itself may not be the best written or the best story or anything like that but the way it made me feel and the way I connected with it meant that it got five stars and the last book that I gave five stars in 2022 was Daisy Jones and the Six by Telly Jenkins Reid um, again this is a very popular book lots of people talk about it it follows Daisy Jones and the Six who is a who are a band from the 70s I believe um, and they split up and now this is essentially interviews um, looking back at why that happened and the situation that came with it and again I'm not sure what it is about this book that I loved so much I was so absorbed by the band I just really wanted to hear the music and I found just the whole industry of it fascinating let alone the story um, between Daisy Jones and the Six and the members of the band and the most people I think prefer Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo but for me Daisy Jones and the Six was the one that I preferred. I mean Evelyn, Evelyn Hugo was good but I don't know it was just something about Daisy Jones that I just really really enjoyed. Of the two that I've read you know, are my favourite Taylor Jenkins read and again I've said it about a lot of these but it is a hyped book and sometimes going into hyped books can be a bit daunting and you're a bit worried whether they're gonna actually match up to all of what's said about them and this one definitely does so there you go they are the best and worst books that I read in 2022 um, I will link my book review playlist um, at the end of the video so that if you're interested in hearing more detail on these books or the other books that I've read they're all there I do a monthly book review um, I was going to say every month but the clues in the name of monthly book review um, and that's all in that playlist for you if you're interested so I'm hoping 2023 is as successful a reading year and hopefully we can 
bumped that average score. I think I ended up on a something like 3.64 rating. And so let's hope we can bump that up a bit. But as I said, five stars are few and far between for me. But yeah, uh, reading, as I said earlier, has become a big part of my life and hopefully it will continue. So if you've enjoyed this video, despite its slight chaotic and pause in the middle, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't already and you're interested to see what I get up to reading wise or just life wise in 2023, click that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Bye!